So, as you may or may not know, the other day, Black Mirror Season 4 came out. I hadn't watched the previous seasons. My buddy Abstract is a huge fan, well, is a big fan of it. So, we watched the entire season together. It didn't take very long. It's only, what is it, five? Is it five or six episodes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's only six episodes. So, we could watch the whole thing in a day. And I I really like the show. Um, I'm going to go back and watch the previous seasons. I don't think it's very long. I think most of the seasons are only a couple episodes. They really kind of mostly have the production quality of a movie, at least kind of a low-budget movie, but I, I really enjoyed it. Um, my biggest issue is, of course, the diversity. It's it's paused. It's not as paused as a lot of things I've seen, though. I, I liked it, though. It was I enjoyed it. So I figured I, because there's a lot of interesting stuff to deal with here, and because they're kind of like mini movies, I figured, why don't I do a reaction review of each episode, say which ones I liked, which ones I didn't like, what I thought was good about it, what I thought was bad about it, and maybe give each one a review on a scale of 1 to 10. Fair enough. So let's get going. So Black Mirror, for those of you who haven't seen it, seems to be kind of a reboot of the twilight zone or the outer limits there's a lot of kind of monkey's paw things in it but it's very much focused on transhumanism and kind of new technology and, and that sort of thing so i thought that was kind of it's it's interesting they really do kind of take because there's a lot of things where they they have these i'm trying to think of how to describe it they have these aspects in it these like these science fiction concepts, but they don't do anything with it. They don't develop it. It's just in there. Like that was a, my friend who runs a Nazball gang did a review of downsizing and his biggest complaint about it was like most bad sci-fi movies. It didn't really explore the consequences of having this radical new technology that changes everything. And this show is all about dealing with what if this technology existed. And these are things people are working on. A lot of it's also about ethics and stuff. And that's kind of what science fiction is about, is it's an existential... It's a way to explore existentialist questions in an, an, a, co a coherent narrative format that's more kind of relatable as opposed to like you can just have you can read Descartes evil demon or you can watch the matrix and the matrix I think is easier for people to grasp just because it's more relatable so that being said let's just go through every episode of the season so the first episode is the USS Callister which is kind of a parody of nerd culture it's also kind of about the eternal autist. So there's going to be spoilers here. So there'll be a bit of spoilers. I, I'm not going to give away the the ending more or less. I'm just going to talk a bit about the plot. Okay, so there's going to be spoilers. They won't be bad spoilers. So, so the USS Callister is about a guy who runs a company that makes a virtual reality game. And it's kind of an MMO. It's It, it, it seems to be kind of like EVE Online is probably the... The closest thing so he's the developer of the game and then there's a guy who runs the business of the game so he has his own version of the game which is offline that he's modded to be like starfleet i think it's called starfleet which is basically a parody of star trek so he's developed a way to use the dna from somebody from people to create a fully functional clone of not only the person but their consciousness within his game so he's god of their world and what's kind of interesting is a bit it's a bit like reboot or something because when he's not playing the game the people are stuck inside the set of the ship and there's nothing they can do all day and they they can't eat they can't sleep they can't even take a shit if you excuse me for saying it and it kind of deals with the morality of that and it's kind of interesting because this this really beautiful girl move, uh, goes into his office and she's obviously really interested in him. 
but be, he prefers the fantasization to simply asking her out, despite the fact that she's like openly flirting and basically throwing herself at him because she. It's not that she's a thought, it's because she has a lot of respect for his abilities as a programmer and respect for the, what he's been able to create, his advancements in technology. So she legitimately likes him because of who he is. But rather than that, he'd rather have a fantasy version of her. So I think it's almost kind of implied that he's afraid of sex because the characters within his world have their, like, it's just smooth skin down below. So they, they don't have genitalia. They don't have butts or any of that kind of thing. And he doesn't really try to have sex with her per se. And when she tries to seduce him later, he's just not interested into it. In it. So it's kind of an interesting exploration on the ethics of creating sentient, if you can. I mean, a lot of things in the show are whether or not you believe in the soul, whether or not you believe that machines can have a soul whether or not you believe that strong ai is possible i tend not to believe in it but it's it's an interesting kind of exploration on the the ethics of the whole thing so it's an interesting deconstruction of that it's an interesting kind of exp yeah the the on the ethics of it on the ethics of creating like sentient machines if you believe once again that you can create sentient machines for your own amusement is this ethical is this not ethical is this moral is this immoral so that's a very interesting thing and it's just a well-written episode the characters are interesting and likable the main guy is legitimately terrifying if you know the trope i must scream the whole thing where you're you're in an eternity of pain and there's no way out that's very common in, in this this franchise Next episode is Archangel. Okay, so USS Callister, I give an 8.5 to. It was, it was good. It was solid. It was, it was very enjoyable. Second one is Archangel. Now, I'd probably give it a 7 personally, because I thought it was an interesting concept, but it's not well done. So kind of the piece of technology you have within Archangel is there's a chip that you insert into your child's brain and it enables you to track them wherever they go. It allows you to see through their eyes. And it allows you to blur things out. So like what it does is if your child sees something that makes them stressed, then it'll block that out. So the, the main girl grows up in this completely safe environment. She Well, obviously she doesn't have a father. And the father's never mentioned because her mother is a liberated single mother who does don't need no man maybe he died but in 90 percent of cases it's it's a single mother who got divorced but yeah so the daughter has no exposure to, she's never seen blood she's never seen violence she's never seen anything like that and she kind of grows up in this extremely sheltered way and eventually the mother kind of realizes that it's dangerous because, like, if she gets injured, she can't see her own blood. And she can't... I think the, the grandfather has a heart attack, and she's not able to help the grandfather because she has no idea what pain and suffering are. So, like, you start off going, this is terrible. We've got to liberate this girl. We've got to, like, help her out. She's got to become a, a autonomous adult. She has to understand the, the, the horrors of that are inherent in life. The issue is, as soon as she's exposed to, like, as soon as they take off the the thing that the parental guidance for life, then there's a child who, I don't think he is actually echoey, but he certainly behaves like one, and he immediately shows her hardcore pornography, he shows her terrorists beheading people, he shows her, like, just, like, horrific violence. Like, just, just the most violent stuff possible. And he just completely destroys and corrupts her mind. And she hangs out with this guy. And he just keeps showing her, like, pornography and just horrific things. And she goes, grows up to be a, a thought. And she has sex with the guy. And when she has sex with him, she pretends that they're, like, in a porn movie. Because he's, he's groomed her so much for it. And, yeah, she pretends, like she's in a porn movie when they're having sex 
And the mother finds out about it by looking at her through the the um the machine because the mother she she um snuck out to go to a social event and they pretended that it was going to a friend's house to watch a movie. It also turns out that the boyfriend is a cocaine dealer and they start to do cocaine together. So her mother basically goes and threatens the guy and is like, stay away from my daughter because you're just screwing her despite the fact she's like 15. You're turning her into a thought and etc. So it's it's kind of, it deals with the ethics of that. It's it's it, it starts out first saying like, okay, this is obviously evil. This is obviously control and a restriction of a privacy but as soon as they take the system away, she becomes completely screwed up. So it's it's you're kind of going back and forth on it. Is the is the thought control app? Is is that a good thing? Should we have thought control? It's it's an interesting question, and it's one that like kind of it tricks you into thinking no, it's a bad thing, but then it presents the other side to it. So it, it's a really interesting. I don't think the story was particularly good. But the concept was utterly fascinating. So next we have Crocodile. Um, my complaint about it was there was no crocodile in it, so it lied to me. So that's a point against it. So basically it's about a couple hits a guy on a bike. And we're not sure if he's dead or yet, but they, they cover it up and they throw his unconscious body into a lake. And kind of as time goes on, more and more things happen and she has to do more and more and more to cover it up and then to cover up the cover-ups etc etc and the sci-fi aspects of this is completely unnecessary because there's this this thing that if you hook it up to somebody you can see their memories and there's an insurance salesman played by a poc of course sorry an insurance investigator who uses it to check out claims and she's checking out a claim and when she's going after the, the claim, then she goes and interviews her and et cetera. So it's, it's just the framing device is this, this woman who's trying to kind of escape punishment. And there's this, this sci-fi device. And my issue is the sci-fi device is completely superfluous. There, there's no reason for there to be this thing that reads your memories. It doesn't add anything to the show. It doesn't really explore any particular moral anything like any particular moral use of technology it's just kind of a traditional kind of monkeys well not even monkeys paw but traditional there's undercover and then there's which way is up this doesn't have to be in this show this could be in any crime drama show as a monster of the week episode this could be in, like, a standalone made-for-TV movie. My, my complaint with this and why I'd give this, like, a 6.5 is there's no reason for it to be in Black Mirror. Once again, not bad, but it's it, the sci-fi aspect is completely tacked on and superfluous. Next episode, we have Hang the DJ, which is by far the best episode in the season. If you can get past the oil drilling, which is pretty insufferable, I, I would say... It's, it's a good episode. Basically, in this, this alternate kind of utopian world, which is kind of implied to be post-apocalyptic or something because nobody works in it, but there's this app kind of like Evil Siri that pairs people up. So it, it says you're going to be with this person for this amount of time, and when the amount of time expires, the, the two people have to move on to the next person. So it can be for 16 hours, it can be for six years. The, the app is kind of seemingly random. And the idea is eventually the app will pair you up with your one true love, the person you're meant to be with, and you'll stay with them forever. And all these other relationships are to feed data into the machine. So once the machine gets enough data, it, can, it, it knows how you react to different things. So this couple meets at the beginning for only 16 hours and then they keep getting put with other people as, as time goes on, but they keep kind of being drawn back to one another. So it's kind of an interesting thing about 
is the computer right? Is the computer wrong? Are they meant to be together? Are they not? Is like, and, and once again, with all kind of shows about a test, you're like, is the test like what? What is the exact nature of the test? And it's it's. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna not spoil this because the ending came as a complete surprise to me. But it's it's excellent. It it deals with a lot of kind of free will determinism. Can a machine truly predict what lies within the human heart? All kinds of fascinating stuff like that. So I would give this a 9 or a 9.5. I thought this episode was absolutely excellent. And I even if you're just going to watch one episode this season, I'd recommend Hang the DJ. Metalhead was trash. I don't even know like what it was about. It shouldn't be a 7. I give it like a, a 0 out of 10. It's like this black and white thing of this this woman going across the scottish moors with these weird robot dogs chasing her and that's the entire movie that's the entire episode i don't have anything else to say it's it's trash don't watch it black museum black museum is interesting because it it makes reference to other episodes which my understanding is it's very rare. Most This is supposed to be an anthology show. And there's some Easter eggs in this from other episodes. So the, the, the framing story is this, this girl stops at a gas station to charge her car. And there's a guy there who runs the Black Museum. And the Black Museum is a history of, of crime stuff. It also has a lot of leftover artifacts from when he used to work in neurotechnology. So we go through three different stories all of which are fascinating and and it kind of cuts back and forth between the real world and well i guess the framing story and what happens within and i kind of thought maybe this is the framing story of all of black mirror is this guy telling people who visit about it so like the first story is about a doctor who gets a implant that lets him feel what someone else is feeling if they're wearing this this interesting hairnet so obviously that's of great help to a doctor because he's able to diagnose people. But obviously this is a monkey paws show, so it doesn't really work out. The second case is a woman who's dying and they transfer her consciousness into her husband and kind of the, the, um, the issues involving that. So that's kind of another interesting aspect to this. Although there's, there's mud sharky in that, which kind of brings it down. Finally, there's the story of a convicted killer who they made a, a sentient copy of his mind and people got to execute him over and over again for fun. And we kind of have a bunch of twists and turns in this episode. And it's really disturbing, but, but it is really good television. There's a lot of kind of socially justice stuff in it. Like, oh, it's that's what you'd call virtue signaling. And then there's, like, evil, racist, rich white males in it who just want to kill the black convict and stuff. So th there is, like, some pause in this. But overall, I'd recommend this good episode. I give it a 9 out of 10. So if you're going to watch this season, I'd say uh, Hang the DJ, USS Callister, and Black Museum. You can watch those skip metalhead you can probably skip crocodile unless you're desperate for something to watch and i'd probably say skip archangel it's not very good so that's kind of my mini reaction reviews of season four of black mirror i hope you enjoyed it um i'd recommend watching it it's a good season it's available on netflix worldwide